This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the Apple Watch Ultra, and a few days ago, I ran an ultra marathon while wearing the Apple Watch Ultra to see if it would live up to its name. And in this video today, I wanna go through a few things that I learned about this watch, some good and some bad, to let you know what it's like to run an ultra with an ultra. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Dave from Chase the Summit and this is the Apple Watch Ultra and like I said, I finally had a chance to run an ultra marathon while wearing the Apple Watch Ultra. Keep in mind, this was a 50K ultra marathon, so just barely an ultra. The event I took this Apple Watch Ultra to was a local 50K here in Northeastern Massachusetts. And if you wanna learn all about that race, you can go check out the vlog I posted a few days ago about that race and what it was like to run it. But in this video today, I just wanna break down what it was like to actually use the Apple Watch Ultra in that kind of race environment. I do wanna mention that this is not an in-depth review. If you wanna check out my full in-depth review about the Apple Watch Ultra, it's like 30 minutes long and I cover everything in that video. I'll link it up here or in the description down below. In this video, we're just gonna be laser focused on the user experience of the Apple Watch Ultra in a race environment. Before we get to the good stuff though, I do wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video and that's Squarespace. If you don't know what Squarespace is, they make websites and they make making your own website incredibly easy. The best part about Squarespace is there's no coding or computer knowledge required at all. All you need to be able to do is type and click and drag and you can make an amazing website using one of their pre-made templates. They've got really nice templates for everything from photography, video, podcasting, and even websites for restaurants and yoga studios. I've personally been using Squarespace for years over on my own website at chasethesummit.com and that's where I host my blog and publish my podcasts and even sell my own merch through the Squarespace commerce platform. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of Squarespace, which is why I was happy to take them on as a sponsor on this channel. So if you're interested in setting up your own website and getting it off the ground as quickly as possible, Possible, head over to squarespace.com slash chase the summit or check out the link down below to get 10% off your order. With that out of the way, let's dive right into what I learned about the Apple Watch Ultra in a race environment. And the first thing I wanna bring up is the action button. For those unaware, the Apple Watch Ultra is the first Apple Watch to add a button, a hardware button to the side of the watch here. All Apple Watches have had the digital crown and the button on the side here, but the Apple Watch Ultra is the first to incorporate a third customizable button called the action button. Now this button can be used for a variety of things from launching apps or music or all kinds of different things, but one feature in particular is very important and that's being able to start your activity where previously on other Apple Watches, you would need to tap on the screen in order to start your activity. Now you can click on this button one time and get off and running very quickly. And that might might sound like a pretty trivial thing to most people. However, I can tell you firsthand experience when you're towing the line at the starting line of a race, you've got your blood boiling, you're ready to start moving, there's a lot of energy. The last thing you wanna do is worry about tapping the right button on your screen instead of just holding your finger on that button, clicking and getting off and going. It's pretty critical to start the activity on your watch. If you miss that step, you're gonna be pretty bummed out a mile down the road when you realize you forgot to start your watch. So as you can see here, I can dive into an outdoor run and all I have to do is press that orange button one time and you'll see that my workout has started. Now the one downside about the action button is that you can't pause or stop your activity from the action button. You actually have to use the two buttons on the side here at the same time and press them together simultaneously. Now I'm paused and if I wanna resume, I can do that again. The action button can only be used to start the activity, which I thought was kind of weird. The next thing I wanna talk about with the Apple Watch Ultra at this race was one thing that's definitely my fault, but it's something I feel like I should mention, and that's silent mode. You're gonna to wanna to turn on silent mode on your Apple Watch before you show up at the race, because it's a little embarrassing if you don't. Because if you use the native workout app on the Apple Watch Ultra, it actually talks. A voice comes on to prompt you on your last mile split, how long that split took, and it talks to you in real time, which is kind of cool if you're by yourself out on the trail, but if you're in a group of people and your watch chimes out, mile five, nine minutes, 32 seconds, whatever, it does get to be a little bit annoying. Split one, split eight, Oh, I can't have Apple Watch talking to me the whole time. Or maybe you do wanna hear it a hundred times. I don't know, I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Moving right along, let's talk about the display on the Apple Watch Ultra and how it performed at this race. The Apple Watch Ultra has arguably the best display on it for a smartwatch. This display 
is super bright, super vibrant. It's got 2000 nits of brightness. You can see it in blaring direct sunlight without an issue. In fact, it's even more visible than a lot of the Garmin's and Transflective displays out there in direct sunlight. It works really well. However, because I was at an ultra marathon, I did adjust some settings. I had always on display turned off because I was trying to maximize my battery life without keeping the display on the entire time while I didn't eat it because I didn't know how long the battery was actually going to last at this event. And because I had always on display turned off, I did need to use the wrist gesture in order to turn on the display, in order to see my pace and my heart rate and my overall distance. And on the Apple Watch Ultra, that gesture for turning on the display is actually really good. Like it rarely misses that. But when you're running, sometimes that did happen. And when I'm like fiddling with my bottles or getting a snack out of my bag or something, it was a little bit frustrating at times to use that wrist gesture to see my pace because I do focus on pace and heart rate at these kinds of events. So yes, the display timeout can be a little bit annoying in a race environment. It's not the end of the world and you certainly get used to it. But if you are somebody who's coming from more of a Garmin or a traditional sport watch, it is something you'll need to get used to. Other than that minor frustration of the display turning off, the Apple Watch Ultra performed really well when it comes to the display. It's super bright, it's easy to read, and because you can cycle through the data pages using the wheel instead of your finger. It makes it a lot easier to use when you're on the run and things are moving around. The wheel is just a lot easier to operate. Moving on to the next topic of conversation with the Apple Watch Ultra is going to be navigation because this was a pain point for me at this particular event. So the event that I ran was a six and a half mile trail that was kind of a windy loop, but there were intersections and junctions and things along the way. Now the trail was marked, but it was nice that on my Garmin, I could load the GPX file for the whole course onto my watch and then follow it on the map in real time. That's a great feature to have. Now, unfortunately, because I was using the native workout app on the Apple Watch Ultra, there's no such feature on the Apple Watch unless you download third-party apps. So I've got a whole separate video about third-party apps in the Apple Watch Ultra. There's an app called Work Outdoors and Gaia GPS that both have mapping and navigation where you can import a GPX file. However, I didn't decide to use those apps because I was worried about battery life. I didn't want to introduce a third-party app that could potentially mess with the battery life. And the whole point of this run and wearing the Apple Watch in particular was I was really curious about the battery life and how it would hold up over this 50K run. Race. I'm probably in the minority of people that really enjoy a good mapping and navigation feature on a watch, but I really wish that Apple implemented that out of the box, even if it was with Apple Maps or something like that, and just made it a little easier to use instead of having to get third-party apps to do this chore. The next thing I wanna talk about with the Apple Watch Ultra is the band. So I've been using this trail band from Apple for several months since they announced the watch, and I love this band. If you're not familiar with the trail band, it's basically a Velcro style nylon band. So you've got little patches of Velcro on the back here, and then it kind of wraps over itself and secures to itself and it's just super comfortable. And the nice thing about the trail band is how easy it is to adjust because when you're on the go in a race environment and maybe you're starting to get a little bit bloated from water retention or electrolyte problems or things like that, you can adjust your band on the fly super quick and easy with this style of band. And yes, other brands are making this kind of band. Apple isn't the only one that makes this kind of band, but this band in particular, this trail band from Apple is one of the best that I've tested. It is super high quality and I really like the material. The trail band does absorb a little bit of sweat and water, which can be kind of annoying and uncomfortable, but it does dry out very quick and I had no issues wearing it at this particular 50K. Moving right along, I wanna talk about GPS accuracy with the Apple Watch Ultra. This is something I covered in my full in-depth review, but I'm gonna mention it here as well. The Apple Watch Ultra has bang on GPS accuracy and I found this pretty impressive at this 50K. Because this race was a six and a half mile course, and you did it five times, in a perfect world, the lines for my tracks would just be stacked right on top of each other. With the Apple Watch Ultra, when I analyzed this GPS activity, it was bang on. All of my tracks were nearly right on top of each other, and that indicates really good GPS accuracy. And now we've got to the topic that you're probably most interested in, and I saved it for last, and that's going to be battery life. How did the Apple Watch Ultra hold up at this 50K race? How much battery did I lose? Before I get into the numbers, I wanna talk about the settings on the Apple Watch Ultra. As I've already mentioned, I had the always on display turned off. So the display was turning off when I didn't need it. And on top of the always on display turned off, I also turned off Bluetooth, 
Wi-Fi and cellular. So I had no connectivity with the outside world, with the internet, with the Apple Watch Ultra during this race. And I did that for the sake of battery. And of course, on top of that, I also used the native workout app instead of using a third party app. And I did nothing else with the watch. I wasn't playing music or anything like that. Aside from those basic settings though, I had everything else set to default. With all that said, I started this race at 100% of charge on the Apple Watch Ultra. I was actually charging it in the car in the parking lot by the starting line to make sure it was fully topped off before I started the race. And I ended the race with 67% after six hours and 12 minutes of running. So that means I lost about 33% of the battery on the Apple Watch Ultra in six hours and 12 minutes of running with GPS turned on. That works out to about five and a half percent per hour. And that adds up to about 18 hours of total estimated battery in a GPS activity. And for those of you that are curious how the Garmin Instinct 2X held up at this race, because again, I was wearing both on different wrists, the Garmin Instinct 2X also had 100% charge at the beginning of the race, and it finished with 78% of its battery left. So that works out to about three and a half percent of loss per hour, which is considerably lower than that of the Apple Watch Ultra. And keep in mind, I had the Instinct 2X in the highest accuracy mode with dual band, multi-band GPS turned on. And if I wanted to, I could actually toggle the settings on the Garmin Instinct 2X and turn off multi-band and just use GPS only mode and get up to 60 hours of use in this kind of race environment, which is pretty valuable. Overall though, I was pretty impressed by the battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra. It held up really good at this race in particular, and I wouldn't hesitate to wear the Apple Watch Ultra at another 50K in the future because there was enough headroom there to not have to get battery anxiety about my my battery running low. Okay, we're at that point of the video where I just wanna go through final thoughts and try to answer the question, should ultra runners buy the Apple Watch Ultra? Because that's kind of a loaded question. I wanna start this just by saying the Apple Watch Ultra is an amazing smartwatch. It does absolutely everything. It's like having your iPhone strapped to your wrist. It's got a cellular connectivity. You can make phone calls, you can text message. You can do just about everything on this watch that you can do with a phone including streaming music and getting Apple Maps and Google and all kinds of things. It's really impressive what this thing can do. And I guess the whole point here is it's really gonna boil down to what you want and what kind of features you need during your race and what kind of headspace you wanna be in. Do you wanna get text messages during your race or do you wanna ignore all those texts and just have your phone in your backpack for an emergency? Then maybe the Apple Watch Ultra isn't for you. But if you are somebody who is using music and text messaging and things like that during these kinds of events, the Apple Watch Ultra makes it really easy since it's right on your wrist. And when it comes to the battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra, I was pleasantly surprised because it held up really well at this race. And I would not hesitate to take the Apple Watch Ultra to another 50K or even 100K distance and not have to worry about the battery because there was plenty of overhead there. I think the only distance I would start to worry about the Apple Watch Ultra would be that 100 mile distance where you could be running from 24 to 30 plus hours, depending how fast you are. In that situation, you would have to stop and charge this watch and that's just annoying when all these other devices these days can do it in one shot on a single charge. At the end of the day though, the Apple Watch Ultra is more of a smart watch and less of a sport watch. And I've said this a million times, it can also do sport functionality really well, but if you're just looking for a dedicated sport watch for running and just no fluff and you just wanna record your activity, something like the Garmin Instinct 2X might be a better option because it's got way longer battery life, it's got a solar panel on the front, and it's about half the price of the Apple Watch Ultra. And on that note, I also wanna mention the Coros Apex 2 because again, way longer battery life, less smartwatch functionality, less fluff to it. For recording runs, the Coros Apex 2 is amazing. And again, it's about half the price of the Apple Watch Ultra. It really comes down to what you need. It's not about what I need. All I can do is share my experience and what it was like to run this particular 50K with the Apple Watch Ultra. And hopefully you found this information valuable. And with that, we've reached the end of this video in the time where I want to hear from you. Do you own an Apple Watch Ultra or any Apple Watch for that matter? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and let me know how far you've run with it, what kind of battery life you're getting in a 50K or 100K, or if you've actually run 100 miles with an Apple Watch Ultra. I'd love to hear from you. Comment down below. And on that note, if you're planning on picking up the Apple Watch Ultra, the Garmin Instinct 2X, the Coros Apex 2, or any watch that I've shown this video, check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you, so you might as well use them. And we finally made it. We made it to the end of this video. And again, this wasn't an in-depth review or overly complicated. I just want to share my user experience and I hope you enjoyed it. 
Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah.